let's take a look at how you'd plot a vector field using Maple. So suppose you wanted to plot a couple of vector fields. Here's two ones. Uh, an easy example, uh, minus yx, and a more challenging one to do by hand. Uh, the first component, 2x minus xy minus x squared. The second component, minus y plus 2xy. So if you want to do any kind of plotting like this, sort of Calc 3 related plotting, we need to type in with plots to load that plotting command, all those plotting commands. Now the command we want here is field plot. That's how you get vector fields. Um, the basic syntax for field plot is you type in the name of the vector field and then a, vec or a viewing rectangle. So for example, if I wanted to do the first example, I could type in the vector field as bracket minus y x bracket. You can also type this in using less than and greater than symbols. Either one will work. Since most people who take Calc 3 at the School of Mines are used to this notation, I'll keep that up there. So there's my vector field. Let me put in a viewing rectangle of x going from minus 5 to 5, y going from minus 5 to 5, and that's all I need. There's the vector field right there. Well, that's not 100% true. If this was completely accurate, if I was right here at the point uh, 2 minus 2, then the arrow is supposed to be 2, 2, which means it should go all the way over here. What Maple does is it tends to shrink all of the arrows down so that they'll fit in the viewing window that you've done. The end result of this is that you'll notice that some of these vectors are small compared to these other ones. They're at the proper scaling. This guy should be that much longer than this one. It's just that neither one of them represents the correct length, and that's just kind of a necessary evil here. There are ways to sometimes make this sort of clump in the middle that's very, very hard to detect a little bit easier to read. The most common technique is to apply a new option called field strength. And field strength simply changes the rule that Maple uses for figuring out how to shrink or grow the arrows. If you type in field strength log, it uses what's called a logarithmic weighting on the weights. And so the upshot is that you have long arrows and you have short arrows, but your really short arrows still have some directionality to it. And so this, while not to scale, is much more uh, indicative of what that vector field looks like. A variation on field strength log is field strength equals fixed. In this case, Maple says don't worry at all about the lengths of the arrows, simply just draw their directions. And this is sometimes very, very useful for, for figuring out the directionality of the flow of a vector field, just not necessarily the speed. Let me go ahead and put it back to log here so at least I can see the variation in the arrowheads. There's one other option that you can do to make this to make the vector field a little bit more readable, and that's to change it so that all of these little arrows here have, well, triangular points instead of these little harpoon points. And you can do that by typing another option, arrows equal slim. And slim, for whatever reason, has to be in capital letters. When I type that, now all of my little arrowheads look like, well, arrows that we would draw in class right here. So there's this first example. Let's take a look at the second example. So I'll clear my work. I want to do a field plot. That vector field is 2 times x minus x times y minus x squared. Remember, you've got to put those stars in. Then minus y plus 2 times x times y. And then let's plot this, say, x going from minus 5 Oops, x going from minus 5 to 5, y going from minus 5 to 5. It's sort of my default starting window. It gets me something. So I get this right here. So clearly there's all sorts of interesting stuff happening going on here. Let's change that field strength to log so I get a little bit more directionality out of it. And so I see lots of motion going this way, lots of motion over here. I see some kind of cascading motion over here. And something more, I can kind of see arrowheads going around right here. I'm actually going to zoom in on just what's happening in quadrant one so I can see maybe some more detail. So I'll make that zero to five and zero to five. And actually there's a lot of interesting stuff happening right here. I'm seeing some spiraling behavior. So let me do two things. I'm going to change the field strength to fixed. And I'm going to add those arrows with the two tops on them. And so actually, when I write it like this, I can see that this vector field is actually apparently starting to spiral around a point right in here. And so maybe let's make the x window go from 0 to 1 and the y window go from 1 to 2. And maybe we'd be able to find that sort of point of spiraling. So, yeah, well, maybe right there dead center, maybe at a half 1.5. And so this is a useful way for investigating the properties of a vector field. And that's all there is to it.